What's up my fellow Dreamfasters and welcome back to another discussion video. So I know it's been a while, but I really wanted to talk about a fairly heavy issue that's been on my mind ever since the show's cancellation, and it's definitely the most confusing and bewildering aspect of Age Resistance right now. Um, because we all know why the show was cancelled. You all saw that video I made which revealed the details and the dynamics of the Netflix de decision. Um, how from a business standpoint, it made perfect sense, really. But from an intellectual standpoint and a creative standpoint, it absolutely did not. But, um, you know what the bigger issue is? The bigger issue is that they threw away a groundbreaking TV show, and that's not a term that I use loosely. We call that show groundbreaking for a good reason. It won an Emmy. It is being nominated for a Saturn Award for a good reason. Not only because it was a legendary show, but because it was literally, in every sense of the word, groundbreaking. And what I equivalent it to is Star Wars, and I know a lot of you are probably questioning that, but seriously, think about it, guys. Back in 1977, George Lucas not only gave us one of the best sci-fi and fantasy stories, but what he actually did, the process of making that movie, the practical effects, the blue screen, the style of filming, right? It was all new. It had never been seen before. What he was actually doing, how he was creating the films, is what earned him that respect. It's what molded his company, Industrial Light and Magic, and every other movie company starved for that technology. They wanted that kind of uh, movie production quality. And then, when he made the prequels in the early 2000s, he did it again. But this time, he created groundbreaking digital effects. He was pushing the boundaries of what was known in terms of digital filmmaking. And because of that, you know, they stepped back and they let him maintain control. They didn't dare impede the genius and his work. And so he continued to shape the world of fantasy. Now, fast forward to 2019 and along comes Age of Resistance. Not only an amazing show, but a groundbreaking show very similar to Star Wars. And how, you may ask? Well, it was the first high fantasy series that was based on the brilliant work of Jim Henson, the man who created the Muppets, and who worked very closely with George Lucas, by the way. But the show was completely done with only puppets. No live actors were used. I mean, how many times have we watched that show and said to ourselves, my God, how did they do this with puppets, right? And... In that sense, the show was brand new. You know, a lot of people will say that Age of Resistance won the award only because it was a great show. And what they fail to realize is that the award was given due to the groundbreaking nature of the show. Uh, as the producers have said many times before, this was their Lord of the Rings. But not only because of the story and the mythology, but because of the process of creating the show. So now, with all of that in mind, the cancellation of the show becomes infinitely more confusing, infinitely more perplexing. Because, as I said in the other video, you know, not every show on Netflix is Stranger Things or Cobra Kai. All the shows perform at different rates. And yes, maybe people weren't familiar with the original movie, the Dark Crystal, or the audience was a little slow to warm to it, but that doesn't matter. Netflix should have realized what they had. And you know, what Stranger Things and Cobra Kai do not have is the super creative, never-before-seen, new-level process of filmmaking. And as good as those shows are, they're still just basic stories featuring basic filmmaking. Age of Resistance was something like Star Wars, something on a completely different level. Therefore, you cannot treat it like just another show. And instead of canceling it, you should have just found better ways of advertising it. Endorse your YouTube communities, reach out to the Dungeons & Dragons community, the fantasy community, build your fan base, right? But they didn't. 
they fail to see everything that I'm explaining to you now. And you know, it's actually very revealing that if your fans can see this, but you can't, it makes you wonder about why and how these people are heads of corporations making these horrible executive decisions seemingly unaffected by passion and imagination and creativity. And it's kind of scary, to be honest. And so now with all of that said, I want to leave you all with my personal special message to the Henson Company. Um, so, Henson Company, on behalf of my Dreamfasters, my Dark Crystal community, um, you know, I want you guys to know that we feel invisible right now. I love carrying on Jim's legacy, but realistically, it's not only my responsibility, right? This is just a YouTube channel. This is just a place to garner support and a fan base, a place to celebrate the Dark Crystal. But it is your responsibility to continue this. And I know the Dark Crystal is just one project that the Henson Company has going on right now. You know, obviously they have the Muppets, they have other TV shows, other projects you're working on. But the Dark Crystal was Jim Henson's dream. This was his masterpiece. This was his mythology. This was his passion project. Um, you know, I'm a fantasy writer myself, and I would hate to be in a situation where people just gave up on my mythology and let companies like Netflix step all over you. The Henson Company created the Muppets. You literally created a brand new genre of making shows and making film, and then you did it again with Age of Resistance. I would think that the Henson Company, given its history and, you know, really its prodigious status, would not be able to be stepped on by a random streaming company like Netflix. And yet, you know, here they are pulling all the strings. As a fan base right now, we feel lost and forgotten because you don't notice us. You know, I can't speak for Dark Crystal Podcasts or the Dark Crystal Conjunction, but my, for myself personally, I have never once heard from the Henson Company. And, you know, to be clear, I'm, I'm not looking for praise. I'm not looking for an award or anything. We just want to be seen. You know, let us know that you know that we're here and we're building your franchise up and we'll continue to do so in your place as long as you stay silent. But your silence is deafening at this point. You know, it's been so long since we've heard anything. And I know, you know, we're not going to hear anything definitive. But like I said before, I just need to hear something from the Henson Company. I just want to know that they're still interested in doing this. It's been so long since we've heard from them. You know, uh, I mean, and basically, the point that I'm trying to get across is that, you know, there comes a time where every movement... Every fan base needs to speak up and speak out. Well, this is our time right now. We're speaking up. We're speaking out. We're tired of seeing this brilliant, groundbreaking show be ignored. You know, tired of seeing Jim Henson's legacy, you know, disappearing. We feel like we're being forgotten. And, you know, from us to you, Henson Company, it's time to act. It's been long enough. Now it's time to act. Well, my friends, that's going to do it for today's groundbreaking new video. So now it's time for you guys to leave all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the Great White Void. What do you guys think? Let me hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this particular subject. And, you know, let's continue to stay passionate as a fan base. Let's keep these discussions going. Um, and, you know, sooner or later, the Henson Company is going to notice us. Uh, the, the larger we grow, the more passionate we become, the more we discuss these things. Um, you know, we can't stay invisible for long, so stay strong and stay passionate, guys, all right? Um, and as always, until next we meet, take care for Thra, for Jim, and I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon.